I work for me, so I can say whatever the fuck I want to. What's up, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fouled Out Podcast. Man, I tell you what, we have got a super exciting show tonight. We have got the 2021 Dirt Late Model Driver of the Year. We've also got Dave Mitchell from Fayetteville Motor Speedway and Kip Thompson. Uh, I'm joined here with uh, Bill Jr. and Chad. Boys, how y'all doing? Good. What's good. up, boys? It's going to be a good one. <laughs> What's up, Dave? What's up, KIPP? What's up, guys? How y'all doing tonight? Hanging out, drinking some cold ones. Hell yeah. This a, a, I, I see you got a, a special guest with you, too. We're trying to make racing great again here in Tyler Motor Speedway. We got the man, Donald Trump, with a VC racing flag. And we're all excited. Man. Wednesday, Wednesday, it starts off. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right here in Tyler Carolina Bull Ring. This will be the finest place to watch the race this coming four days here at Tyler Motor Speedway. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So so y'all got a lot of stuff going on this week. It's going to be a busy week, week for Dave. Dave probably won't get much sleep. Um, <laughs> Dave, you want to tell us a little bit about what you got going on and what's going to ha- take place this week just for the people out there that's going to be racing and the people that's going to be fans to sort of know what kind of schedule we're going to have, what kind of layout it's going to be? Tuesday night, we're going to have a practice. I believe it's uh, Chase posted on Facebook. Everybody wants to face the page real close. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the King of the Cushion, Dave, um, you know, one of our shows that we had you on, we sort of, you sort of had a discussion with Christian, which led into everybody on the page basically throwing money out there to add if him and Willie would go to the back and start at the rear. Yeah, where are you um, at right now? Where, where are the numbers down at? Um, so I'm just going to go through right now and give each person a little shout out. And, um, um, so you got Jody's DJ service. They're going to add a hundred dollars. You got all star home improvements. They're, they're putting a hundred dollars. You got racing granny, put in a hundred dollars. You got Tony and Bobby Jackson, raging rooster, Katie and catering, put in two fifty. <clears throat> you got Kate for land, Kate for land and Kate for land maintenance, put in 200 Henry Barnett, put in a hundred Jason Maynard, put in two fifty. the North Carolina nightmare. White kitchen himself gave a hundred. Wow. Denton Little um, gave two fifty if Willie or Christian wins, and then he gave an additional two fifty day for the fast qualifier. It's presented it's by Tyneco Concrete. Tyneco yeah. Concrete. Um, <clears throat> Donnie Jackson of one eight hundred Plumbing um, gave a hundred dollars. Chuck Lee gave another two fifty. KIP P Kip Thompson himself from Chat Lee gave two fifty. Um, Wayne Matthews from Eastside Motorsports and Performance gave a hundred. Joe Adams um, put up two fifty, and Jason Prince put up the big fifteen hundred. Wow! So right now, and I know from talking to you earlier, <clears throat> you said that you're willing to throw in a little bit more than what you initially said. So right now we're at 3,800 without yours, and I think you told me you were willing to put in 1,200, would put us at an even 5,000 for Willie or Christian to come from the rear and win this thing. That's what we definitely need to do is bump it on up and make it a 10,000 win total. Yeah, um, I think I think that's going to make it exciting. I think the boys, I think I think out of all the racers, I think those two 
probably would have the best chance of coming from the rear and pulling that off. Um, if not, like I said, I think they'd have a good chance. It's going to be tough with whoever decides. It's just going to be tough, but, you know, you got to let your balls hang out. And I think you had a race one time said, nut up or shut up. I got a trophy in the garage. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Kip, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing down in Victory Lane down there for this special week of speed weeks. Well, as we spoke uh, on the Shiners radio racing program a couple of weeks ago, uh, Rooster put it absolutely perfect. He nailed it when he said uh, what sums up Victory Lane in this emotion. Uh, the emotion, the excitement of winning. Uh, like we said earlier, you know, throughout the year, uh, you may normally have maybe a guy that wins four, five, six, or seven races, uh, but there's always that one chance, that one night of uh, when, we're, when we're having our local shows uh, away from a national deal like what we're doing this week where there's that one guy who everything goes right for him that one night, and he, and he steps up into uh, victory lane for the first time. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, like Dave said, man, we've got great traveling coming. We've got people from all over and everywhere coming here, uh, not only to run in the Annex uh, Legend Series, uh, he's also going to be running on the Sport Mod uh, as well. Uh, so and we've got a lot of people from around the country that are coming to race with us this year. Um, so this is our second annual North Carolina Speed Week. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, we hope to pack the house out. I know it's going to be crazy around this place Saturday night with the King of the Cushion Challenge. It's going to be going on here. It's also going to be real fun, too, because it's always real great when you're here on a weekly basis to, to see you know, some of your local drivers uh, to see that they compete with guys all over the country. You're going to have uh, a guy sitting in the studio with you right now who got, as he just said, one of the medical uh, event here last last year. Uh, Chad Grove, Ryan Shaver will be here. Samoski, out of Holden Beach, North Carolina, a very, very talented driver. Uh, Jaden Bowen is going to be here in the 01. So I uh, talked with him the other night at the banquet, man. He's all excited. Uh, we're glad he's going to be back here and running with us on. Uh, but the whole deal in a nutshell is going to be great, man. Daniel Parker looked really good the other night. He was here on Saturday night. Uh, this 602 crate late model. Uh, there'll be a lot of different cars here. Dalton Jacobs was here in his ride. Uh, so it's going to be really good, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I just can't wait to crack over the microphone for the first checkered flag and capture that first win with somebody right here in 2022 campaign at Federal Motor Speedway, also known as Carolina Boy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I hope yeah. some of those checkered flags come to that concrete pad over there. Yeah, no doubt for sure. <laughs> I definitely want one to come over my way. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, Dave, um, so, you know, a big thing with the King of the Cushion was we was talking if we were going to be able to get them guys two grooves, if we were going to be able to get them a cushion up top. Do you feel confident that you're going to be able to – that you, Wayne, Freddie, Kip, all the guys you got out there working night in and night out, you think you all going to be able to handle that? It's better now. we got guys coming around walking and walking the track Saturday night. Uh, we had Ryan Shaver and all their boys walking the track. They just can't believe that big a cushion we've got. Well, you can't. Our you can't. <laughs> but listen, you can't ask Ryan about racetracks. You can ask him about spindles or shit like that, but you can't ask him about racetracks. Get off the 9-8 step. We're talking about racetracks. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about the cushion that we're looking to try to see this weekend. As we speak right now, uh, the dirt doctor, Wayne Gray Jr., is out on the motor grader right now. He and Freddie, they're here. They were here yesterday. They were here real late Saturday night. A lot of track prep is going in uh, right now, and we're looking forward to a big deal, not only uh, for practice tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, but the showdown is going to go down Saturday night. King of the Cushion, right here inside the Carolina Bull Ring. We want everybody, if uh, you can listen to us, you're hearing us, you know, Make sure you're here. Bring a friend. Bring Find somebody who's never been to a dirt track race before because they will be hooked when they leave Federal Motor Speedway this coming Saturday night. Not only this Saturday night, every night. Now, we want everybody here that we can get here. Last year, we had a great crowd, had a lot of great racing. Uh, cars from all over the country are coming right here to the Federal Motor Speedway, and we want everybody to be a part of it. And I'd like to take the opportunity on behalf of Dave and myself and everybody here at Federal Motor Speedway. Thank you guys for what you guys do. Uh, to promote the sport of racing and for what you're doing on a special show tonight, because I know you guys normally do this on a Wednesday or a Thursday, but uh, thank y'all for doing this special show tonight to try to promote what we're going to do this week. That's right. Hell like, yeah. Like I said, you know, we, we, we love what Dave, all of you are doing out there at the racetrack. And like I say over and over and over, I know people get tired of hearing me say it, that Dave was a racer first before he was a promoter. 
So that gives them a little leg up on knowing what a racer wants and knowing what a racer needs to make a good competitive racetrack and have a good competitive race. So, Bill, on that part, these four days, I just did a short on the track itself. Uh, back in the pit area, we brought uh, shower houses in. So, all the campers, the guys that come in and travel, even the local guys, if you want to camp, come on out and camp. We have shower oh, houses. Yeah. We have uh, campfire stuff, everybody. We have uh, toilet services coming in from come and receptive. They're going to come every day and empty everybody's uh, septic for them. Uh, just a bunch of different things. And lights. We got extra lights coming in. We got tower lights coming in. We start, start stopping on the other side of it. Water tower, maybe a few places out on the racetrack. It's a little bit darker than normal. We're going to do that. <clears throat> uh, and one more thing I'll kick off real quick. It's going to be really cool this year. And then actually, we have five or six people over in the tower working as we're speaking right now. Getting it up. It's the Carolina Bull Ring TV, uh, FayettevilleTV.com, and it's FayettevilleSpeedwayTV.com. So we teamed up with INCA TV and uh, Speed Sport TV. And we'll start having our own television program. Hell yeah. Nice. Hell yeah. That's Hell awesome. Yeah. Like I said, and again, I'm I'm gonna do this from at least us here. We thank you for what you're doing. Cause um, you know, like I said, you could be just sitting back collecting, but you don't. You try to put back into it and, and make it a better place for family, kids, everybody. And um like Kip was speaking a while ago saying about people that haven't come to races, don't know anything about races. I had like several people, Mr. Wheeler um hell i can't even think of the, the ones that messaged me on facebook and asked me what they needed to do to come what night would be a good night to come if they could come hang out and um you know and i told him i said listen y'all more than welcome to come over there to that concrete and hang out and probably don't want to bring no kids over there because we cuss over there and drink but <laughs> but um but anybody that wants to come is more than welcome to come over there and like we just want to fill your facility up man and and give back to you what you're giving to us you know, because if it don't fill up and it don't, people don't come and people don't watch the races, then, then you know, that, that starts to hit your pocketbook. And, and we don't want that to happen. We want everything to play out smooth and go good and everybody have a good time and some fresh faces, win some races, and just party it like hell in victory lane with Kip. Well, and I have one more question. Uh, Dave, out there at Fayetteville Motor Speedway, like all year, is it, is it active duty military or always? Uh, what is it for the, for the military guys? Thousand percent active duty military. Okay, yeah. so, so awesome. So, what are we doing for the senior citizens, Dave? Because I did have a couple people ask me that. There is a discount. Shane uh, put that on Facebook. You have to look at it. The senior citizens get a discount. The EMTs get a discount. There's all kinds of situations. There's whatever it takes to get people to cover. If right. They want to see, we want them here. We've got to lower the prices to get them in. We've got other sponsors that are coming on board. We're working on half price night, or working on zip code night, working on all kinds of different things to try to get the community more involved. Instead of just just a racer coming to watch, we're trying to find that local guy that the kids have never seen race before. Well, one thing to be really great, one thing to be really great, guys. You know, all of us that are involved in this uh, on the podcast the other night, on the very end, doing the show yourselves, you know, we've talking a little bit. We've got this too. Uh, if everybody could go out and share and just mention, I mean, we're right here in the heart of Fort Bragg, biggest military base in the United States of America is right here just down the road from us. You know, we want our military guys here. We appreciate what they do for us because without them, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do. And uh, all the active military are free every night, every race here inside the building of Speedway. Awesome, man. And um, there's there's a couple people that are on here that are, are just saying if if y'all could talk a little slower, they're reading the subtitles. There's a bad echo uh, coming on y'all's end, but uh, we'll still get all the information and, and all that stuff out for, for everybody. Um, but you had a practice uh, Saturday night, um, and there was a lot of cars out there. And, Dave, what's the deal with the tire situation? Are you going to have tires for sale or, you know? Uh, as of right now, we sold tires at Saturday night practice. I still had a few tires left over for uh, just coming up Tuesday night practice. And then Wednesday morning, we'll have another load of tires coming in from Houston. Houston. And then uh, the Mideast will bring, bring the tires also for the late models and the first two models. So tires should not be an issue. Uh, cross your fingers that everything goes through the tires. It's always been tough this year. We knew in the middle of last summer the tires were going to be tough. 
uh, we have tires right now. So, Dave, Chad here, uh, question. Uh, I saw you guys have moved the big tires up the racetrack a little bit. So is that what we're going to be? Is that what we're going to be running with this week? Yep, the big tires are put out. Uh, I don't know if they can turn around and show you. Now. We'll send you a video. No, I, I saw the video. We're, we're good. I just quick question. Okay. I just want to make sure it's going to be like that. You know, through the speed weeks. The tires are not as high as they were last year. What uh -huh. two? Or two? Now, the other thing is this: this is kind of deceiving about the race track right now. Is we brought in 125 loads of clay and three and four. Right. And we right. ran three and four up three feet. So, so it's three foot taller in the bottom of three and four. So we took a lot of banking out of the bottom. And uh, it's really made the trip race track really, really smooth. And uh, we had one little hump we're working on where you come on and off the racetrack. Uh -huh. the and uh, we keep blading it every night. And we get better every night. We'll blade it every single night. So, keep going, so. so uh, one and two's kind of the same way? Uh, we added more dirt there. We added about 50 loads to the bottom there. But you have a lot more bottom there. So you can actually, down before, we didn't have clay at the bottom, and you guys are still running in the dirt that wasn't no good. Now we put some good dirt down there for you to run in. Hell yeah. I just need one, and I need that two to be a little better, you know, <laughs> or maybe not get into the gas too soon. What'd you say, Dave? One, two, three? Yeah, you just got to stay off the tire. Uh, hey, <laughs> sir. Um, Dave, Kenny Martin, come on here. I guess he didn't hear y'all's answer. He asked, what about the EMTs? Kenny, um, the EMTs will get in at a discounted rate every race, I'm assuming, at Federal Motor Speedway. Is that correct, Dave? I'm not 100% sure of that. I'm pretty sure they got their EMT card. They do get a discounted rate. As long as they got their EMP card, we've got it set up with Hope Mills, fire department. They come in here with a fat back of them, and we've got it set up with a discount for EMT. They have to have their card. Well, you have to okay. watch out for the Pierce Mill fire department guys. For the Pierce Mill guys, the department's great guys, Scott Matt Matthews and his crew. You have to watch them because every car is piled up to one, two, three, and get the score down here in turn three. Oh, yeah. Oh. Does PWC get a discount? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Good luck. 20 years. <laughs> so you got anything else, AJ? No, nah, not right not right now. Just everybody come out. Uh, is there, and, and as far as Dave, um, a like a, a, a ticket that people can buy for the all four right. nights, is there like a special for that or anything? We're watching the weather right now, and Say we're on the day of the race. As long as we look like we're going to have good weather for the three or four days, we're going to offer a discounted rate for the for the races for sure. Hey, that's we're awesome. Okay. Fair we're enough. Have, yes, four-day package. And it looks like we're going to have a rain out or something, or it's going to be iffy, and we'll back it back down to just buying single tickets. But we're going to try to have a discount rate for everybody that comes in once. Cool. Okay. And, and as far as that, like, uh, if you have to make a call, what – when, what is, is there a deadline of when you're going to make that, or, we're, or we're do you know? There's not going to be no deadline, because the, the train of thought is, as a racer, if I've had you travel eight hours from my race type to race, I'm going to try to race. Hell yeah. Right. So if it rains at four o'clock, and I can race at six o'clock, I'm going to race. If it, if it, we've done it here before, it's 9.30 or 10 o'clock, we don't have a curfew, we're going to try to get the race in. Hell yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. <clears throat> I remember that night. Good so deal. We're going to run it. <clears throat> so Kip, I'm gonna go a little off. We ran one night. There was like a pond over here coming off a of turn three and four. We waited it out. We still got the race in. Yeah, and that's what I said. That's the thing with Dave being a racer. He's gonna. He knows what it costs for people to travel. He knows what it costs for people just to just to run local people. So he's gonna do what he's got to do to to make sure that that we run these races. And right now the weather was great. I think so too. Like we're going to have 75 and 80 degree days. We're going to have some wind on Friday. And then it's going to get some cold on Saturday. As long as we have no rain, we're going to race. So everything's looking pretty good. Uh, it looks better than it did four or five days ago. Four or five days yep. ago, it's keep rusting our fingers. And if it's pretty outside, we're going to rain. And as long as the rain holds off, we're going to race. So I think we're, we're good, good to go. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah, me and Freddie, we'll be watching the racetrack. And We'll be, if the weather challenges, time to seal it, we'll seal it. If it's time to open it up, we'll open it up. So, I think we've done pretty good at it so far. I've got to give Wayne and Freddie a big shout out. They do a great job on the race track for me and helping me and teaching me and 
and, and getting us where we are today. I think we get better and better every year and have less hangouts and better racetracks. And we don't have rough racetracks. We don't have holes everywhere, not on wood. Uh, just like I said, give those guys real prompts on what they do and experience that. Hey, what you got, a lot of people don't understand that. For those of you who are, are race, race car drivers and that will be here this weekend, the Tuesday night really was kind of like a test of team just for the racetrack along with the race cars. This is the first time any race cars have actually been on the track since we put all the dirt and all the modifications and uh, things have been made. We saw what was going on. There was a little bit of movement there in terms of getting into turn one as you cross over the track. Um, Wayne went out and cut it down. It was still there just a little bit uh, Saturday night, but uh, these guys have been working their butts off. And uh, if you have not had a chance to come out and practice, you are going to be here. We invite you to be here tomorrow night. We start about six o'clock. Uh, come on out and uh, turn some laps, man. Get ready for uh, speed weeks right here inside the Carolina Bull Ring. It's going to be an exciting week, and, uh, and we're excited. We just can't wait to have everybody here. Man, I'm I'm super excited to have this thing go kick off. And um, like I said, I know this is the second annual, and I hope that we talking about this eight more years from now, talking about the 10th annual. That's the, that's the goal. That's the plan. Hey, hey Dave. Yeah. Hey, quick question. Uh, I was at Willie's the other buying some parts. He brought up a um, something you, I guess you guys have talked about. Are we still considering – Splitting the field in half with the legends if we got, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 or 60? Uh, as far as speed weeks? Yes. Okay, so as far as speed weeks go, this is for all classes. Wednesday night, Thursday night, we all run people. So this goes okay. like Wednesday night racer. If, okay. If you come out in here and there's 41 cars, I'm racing two feet. Okay, yes. If there's two cars, I'm running two feet. There's 28 cars, we're running one feet. So awesome. Everybody is going to run a feature Wednesday and Thursday. They're not going to show up and drive out of town and not get to run a There is no B main Wednesday and Thursday. Everybody races a feature. So if I have two late model features, two port mod features, and two legend features, that would be awesome. Okay, so, cool deal. I didn't mean to like single out with the legends, but hey, that's awesome, man. No, it's, you know, it's for everybody. Everybody's going to race features. Nobody's just going to sit here and, and watch other people run. Hell yeah, brother. Way to go, man. I love it. Way to go, man. I love it. So, so Dave, well, I can't ask you that. I can ask Kip. Kip, who is your pick to come from the back in this King of the Cushion Challenge? Ooh. CT or the Wild Child? Kip. The one. The, the one car. The one. I'll take the old See, nice. and and I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go against Dave because y'all know Willie's my horse, and I'm gonna ride him till he till he can't can't run no more. Um, I think the one is gonna come from the rear and do his thing, and that new Barry Wright icon. Um, I just like the gamble. Hey, hey, I, Dave! I think the sheep middle man is gonna win. That's right. You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I would be happy to pay either one of them. I know that's right. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I think it's going to – I think it's bringing a lot of attention to the race because, um, like I said, we've got message after message after message about people. Even if they don't like it. Or yeah, really. even if they didn't like it. They they said, well, it you know, they were asking, did we really think they were going to do it? Did, did – you know, and I told them, I said, well, they said they were. I mean, that's all we can go off of. They they said they were. We we got the money together. Um, Five thousand extra dollars ain't nothing to sneeze at. That'll buy a few parts if you can drive that thing from the rear and bring it to the front. My sponsor Greg gave me five thousand. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an awesome show. Um, those two guys do go to the back. You got you know, they're not the only two guys racing here, but that's what the all eyes will be on those two guys if they do go right. to the back. Uh, I will tell you that uh, this Saturday night. Uh, this, excuse me, this past Saturday night when we had a practice, I'll go ahead and give you a little heads up. That black captain on the wheel that driver number three, Sean Harris, was looking up moving around here Saturday night. So, I uh, bet. There's a lot of great cars here. Uh, but if those guys indeed do go to the rear, um, you know, I wonder, I wonder if anybody has any idea as of yet 
what kind of car count. Um, anybody on my race has, are we up to 14, 15, maybe 20 cars? We'll get to this before 20 cars. We'll have that. So 50 laps, man, it's going to be that. And, and, and to have that kind of uh, big money on top of what the regular race is, and that don't pack out the and I don't know what to say. It's going to be a big night. Hell yeah. I agree, man. It's just the excitement that I had about the race. I mean, yeah. You've got, you've got Brandon and you've got uh, Michael Wells over at Halifax. All of us have worked together hard this year to make sure that the preliminary late models are going to stay alive. And we're going to work really hard. We've got four or five races at Fayetteville, four or five races at Canada, four or five at Halifax, all nine and five races. And we're all not racing to eat together. We're all taking the, the night off. We're all doing the visit to eat the track. So one track's not competing against another. We're all pulling the money together for a big points fund for the guys at the end of the year. We're all pulling good money for them. Here in the middle of the summer, we're going to have a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and we're going to play model. Each night, we're going to race one of our tracks. Uh, one the first night in Halifax, second night in Brandon, and the sixth in the three months, and this is what my vision. So we've been up to the I 95 team to keep the landing light models together. Well, that matters. <clears throat> Well, awesome, guys. Uh, hey, we really do appreciate it. Um, and we'll definitely make sure we get everybody out there as much as we can. Hell, yeah. Well, you guys can see in the background, like we said earlier, when we came on, we're doing everything we can do. Back race and great again right here inside. the side of the Maybe the, maybe the fuel prices will come down. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So, guys, we're going to get you all off of here now, and we're going to take a short five-minute break before we bring Big Sexy, Brandon what? Overton, on the show. And thanks for what you guys do, man. We appreciate y'all having us on. Thank you. Absolutely. We, we're we going to bring y'all back on as soon as this is over with. Hey, Kip, I, I plan on seeing you a few times this week. Okay. Just saying. Well, just, Just saying. It'll always be starting out with the party in the basement. Damn right. We'll get, we get old blonde here to spend some money. We'll be all right. Hey, listen. You come up, don't cry, but also bring the race of granny, okay? Race granny. I'll let race and granny say everything if she doesn't already. I got you. Thank I you, got brother. You. Ted, good luck to you this week, man. All of our local drivers, um, Ryan Shaver, Sadowski, all you guys, uh, Jason Bullard, we're here on a weekly basis. We look forward to having all of you guys here. It's going to be a great week, man, for all of the classes. And, uh, but there again, Saturday night, it's going to be, uh, the showdown is going to go down right here. Inside Hell yeah, man. And uh, we're excited, man. Thanks, guys. Hell Absolutely. Yeah, guys. Thank y'all. Like take I said, we're going to take a short five-minute break, and then we're going to come back on with Brandon Overton. Yeah, yay. All right, guys, so we're back here, and we got the man, the myth, the legend, Big Sexy. What's going on, bud? What's up? Y'all got it's me? Sex, 
It's sexy time. <laughs> the baddest mother. Woo! Hey, so what's the last year like being the baddest motherfucker on the planet in Dirt Lake Model? <sighs> Man, I I don't even know. It's uh, I try not to think about it because I don't know. I guess it's just hard to believe that I that I've done what I've been able to do, you know, and and win the win all the stuff. Um, I don't even know. I mean, the coolest thing is just the everywhere I go, somebody's like, "Hey, that's that's Brandon Overton," or all the kids yeah. come up to me and and uh, you know want me to sign stuff. So uh, I don't know. It's cool. It is what it is, and just trying to trying to keep it rolling. Oh, country boy from Evans, Georgia, busting these big boys' ass. Man, yeah. I just like it that you keep it real. That's what I like. Well, as real as they come. And now, uh, now, man, how did you exactly get it started in racing? Because I heard that you were actually supposed to be a drag racer, right? Yeah. Um. yeah he learned Steve, He learned that Stevie lived behind <laughs> him. Boy, he had to pick another sport. The bad man uh, lives down there where you live. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, no, I, I actually, uh, my daddy was a drag racer, and that's, Pretty much when I quit racing go-karts, that's what he wanted me to do. And uh, we went to Commerce, to Atlanta, to the NHRA race, and we watched it. And then uh, a boy that I raced go-karts with, his dad drove uh, dirt cars. And I went and stayed with him one weekend, and we went to the to the dirt track. And I remember calling my daddy from there, and I said, man, I, daddy, I, I, don't want no, I don't want no drag car. I think I want one of these dirt cars. And he, fun. He's kind of pissed at first. Uh, so anyway then after that we we started kind of dabbling in it going and watching a couple of them and that's just the, the route we took you got you got a little brother in the sport that you grooming too yeah yeah he's yeah he come out here waxed ass <laughs> yeah he come out here and waxed ass till his engine broke don't um, tell him don't yeah tell him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah so look i want you to just be honest with us how much fucking money did you really win last year uh i think it was like 951 is what we won okay nice. i'm disappointed yeah. you were short of a fucking million yeah, I know, that's, <laughs> we're still hey we still poor country boys yeah you, that's you, what you, uh that's the that's it, it sucks because we honestly um i made it 15 laps short of of or whatever the last restart of the dirt track world championship to win that would have been i paid 100 grand second paid 20 so that's 80 i lost in 15 laps or whatever last restart of that race and uh then vegas so so we miss it there and then we go to vegas and the damn left front tire falls off in the feature of vegas so we were racing for double money there so we i mean we still won 950 but we could have won over a million if we just wouldn't have had some bad luck or maybe would have just tightened the damn left front tire up so I, it is what it is i'll tell, racing, you, I tell you something that people forget too so last year during Florida Speed Weeks and Georgia Speed Weeks and all that bullshit, you were leading a lot of them fucking races, and I think you had some drive shaft trouble in a couple of them or, or something. Um, yeah, the, we did. I mean, actually, at the beginning of the year, we were falling out with just stupid stuff, having flats. We uh, we were leading a couple uh, a Lucas race, and I think I had a flat tire coming to the checker or something last corner. Just a lot of stuff happened. It's just once after we got to Eldora, you know, we won all the we won a big chunk right there, and then it's like after that we really couldn't mess up until we got to the to the end of the year. So, go ahead. Well, I was gonna ask. So, um, like when you when you're deciding where you're gonna go race, is it just straight like we're looking for the money, or because I know you kind of run an outlaw schedule. I mean, you're not really on the Lucas like running for points or anything. You just you just go for the money, right? Yeah, AJ, he don't do that yeah. bitch shit. He don't do that bitch shit. <laughs> yeah. I run, uh, I just look at, like, I need to sit down and make a schedule, but just pretty much, yeah, the money is mostly what we look at, but also just some of the tracks. I mean, even though they pay a lot of money, sometimes the track sucks, and it's like, hell, I don't want to go race somewhere that I don't I don't like. I mean, it doesn't matter if they pay a bunch of money or not. If you don't like right. it, you probably ain't going to do good. So I try to go to all the places that, you know, whether I'm familiar with them or not, just just something's got to kind of drive us to go there. You know, the promoter being cool or the track being badass or something like I, The money's a big part of it, but still, I, I try not to race anywhere that I don't like. So, awesome. so out of the big name guys that you race with night in and night out, who would you say your biggest competitor is? Or is it like, fuck it, the whole field's my competitor. I'm trying to crush everybody. Yeah, I mean, honestly – shit man they're also good you you watch the speed week stuff we just ran 
mm-hmm. there's not one person that wins every single night, especially now, like how they got the rules and just so much shit can happen. We went to, you know, like Belusha the other night. If you miss qualify, you could be two tenths off and be get you on a third row of a heat. Well, if you if the track's wide open and you can't pass, like you're right. gonna be starting eighteenth. You ain't gonna win from eighteenth nowadays. You know the, the everybody's too good. So, right. I mean, there's a lot of them. I don't know. It's all pretty much you. You just gotta. It's all who can put put a full night together. You gotta you gotta qualify good. You gotta win that heat. You gotta get out front in the race and and not mess up. So. It, it is what it is. Any any given night, there's probably 10 or 15 of them that can win. Well, and, and I mean, does it kind of, when you, like you had a motor that, that let loose when you're down there, does that kind of get in your head a little bit? Or are you just like, man, fuck it, and just pop another one in, keep going? Because I know you, I mean, you've had some really good runs so far this year, but you've also, you know, there's been a couple of times where like some stupid stuff has got you. Yeah, no, I think I get more upset about the motors. If I had to buy all that sh- stuff, I'd be <laughs> no, you say shit. It's okay. Yeah, if I had to, if I had to pay for it, I'd be running the the bang banger division. But um, so I still treat it like it's mine. I mean, that's a that's yeah. a forty fifty thousand dollar motor we tore up. So I think it, it it bothers me worse than it bothers my car owner. You know, right, um, right. It. it you know what I'm saying? It's just shit. It don't matter how much money we win or not. It still still takes a lot of money to, to do what yeah. we do, run up down the road. So I, I don't know. Goes. It still bothers me because I know how much he puts into it and how much how much money people invest in, in me. So, uh, like I said, yeah, it, it bothers me pretty good. <laughs> well, hey, man, what about our local dude, fucking Dalton? He's doing big things. I love it. Yeah, he's going to be fine. He, um, I think he's going to be one. Yeah, Watch. he, it's the 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 regional where he grew up. When he goes back, he'll be that much better. I mean, you know, I don't think anybody expected him to go to Speed Weeks. Everybody knew he was down there because he was fast. I mean, when Damn he would right. qualify or something, but somebody I'd hear people said, "Who the hell's in that eighteen car?" You know, so uh, he's he can do it. He just he's getting a little taste of what we've all been through. You know, they throw right. him out there, and you got pretty much you got a World One Hundred or, or, or a. a dirt lake model dream field every night in speed weeks and like i said mm-hmm. just that little miss will get you behind so he's taking in some of that he ain't never been in none of them places he did great i um, think so. oh yeah do good they're they're uh i don't know how you say it like he's not and not that he's stubborn but he's gonna be fine because he ain't gonna give up you know i feel like right. he's got something to prove no he is he stubborn he wants to show everybody he's definitely stubborn i talked to him every night after that race and then he beat himself up a little bit during some things but he told me he said look he said listen you cannot believe the difference in the race and he said these guys they don't give an inch um you know he said he said if it he said in the regional racing you know a guy sees your front wheel at their fender they're gonna give you that space he said you get nothing here you got to go take what you want yeah but they do that's the i think that's the biggest difference like uh around home i mean you got your five or six that you know is gonna is how they're gonna race but it doesn't matter if you line up most of the time you're, you're worried about the guy on the inside of you like when you run these races you're worried about man i better not go down here and slide up because the guy behind me gonna pass me too so you just gotta mm-hmm. be on your, your a game all the time you gotta run every lap pretty much as hard as you can the whole entire time till you get in that feature and then you can kind of race smart before we go into deep like talking shit I want you to just <laughs> shout out your sponsors. Yeah. Like I know you you like I met you through Harold. You know Harold's a buddy of mine. And I met you through Harold and me and you started talking and hell realized that the person that I helped in drag racing lives right behind you. And um in fact, y'all are probably the only two champion drivers ever from Evans Evans, Georgia. You know, he's won the Pro Mod NHR. The only two that race around here. Well, yeah, maybe Fucking bad yeah. category there, Dad. but um, but it's it's pretty it's that's a pretty strong statement to say you got the two baddest motherfuckers in the world in the same in the same town, and they, and they live behind each other. Um, I, I haven't been to it. I I, I I see him around every now and then, but I ain't never really said nothing to him. Listen, uh, cool, cool, cool yeah. guy, man. All you got to do is go over there and tell him that I told you to come over there and holler at him. Super yeah. cool guy. In fact, he could probably he could probably. You let him fuck around with that dirt car for about 30 minutes. He can probably teach you something. He's the smartest redneck you know, I promise. He's a very smart cat. 
Very smart cat. Feared in the drag racing world. I need him to come to Fevel and learn how to do some legend shit. But um, so give your sponsors because like, you got a ton of them. So let's give yep, your sponsors a shout out. You know, starting with the Wells boys. Yep, uh, Dave and Eric Wells, Wells Motorsports, um, Convenient Lube, CrossFit Overton, uh, All Star Concrete, Easy Go, um, Big Dog Stumping Tree, Dirt Mafia, um, Cleanway Clearing. Got uh, RW Powell Construction, Garnto Southern, Hearst Construction. I got a, I had a sponsor down there in Florida come up to me. I just met him, uh, Angry Elephant Tattoo. So he's going to help us out a little bit this year. Hell yeah. Um, I think that's on the roof of your car, ain't it? Yeah, hell yeah. He came yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. He, he sponsored Cody, and he come over and started talking to us at East Bay. So, yeah, we we put it on there. Um, we had to swap cars at, at Volusia, and I ended up having to pull it back out. So, Got them again on there. So, but yeah, we got a ton of people that help us. I, I couldn't do it without all them. Well, I'm gonna tell you, man. When I talked to Harold back when you were driving with Joy and 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 racing with Harold, I talked to Harold a lot, and he told me. He said, "Man, he said, listen. He said, you know, I've been around the sport bell my entire life. He said NASCAR, all of it. He said, I'm telling you right now, Brandon Overton is one of the top five wheel men I've ever seen in my life." And, and that's a big, big compliment coming from a guy like that that's been around your Earnhardt's, your Gordons, your Jimmy Johnsons. I mean, to say that you're a top five wheel man, like I said, that's a compliment that just it, you can't compare that comp that nine hundred fifty one thousand don't even compare to that compliment. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a strong statement. Do Do you want to like? Would you like to go race in NASCAR or like make that step? Or you kind of you just love the dirt so much? No, I mean, obviously the money would be a lot better right. than that yeah. car, but uh, I mean, if I don't ever get a chance to do it, I mean, shit, it is what it is. I right. I race for a living, you know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. got a, I ain't really got a real job, so uh, that's better than what I could be doing. So, that's what uh, you're doing, what you this, love. This, this this as far as I get, that's cool with me. I mean, even, I, I think about it all the time, like, even if I did race NASCAR and just say I did make millions of dollars. Shit, I race all the time. What am I gonna do with it? You know, what I mean? yeah, exactly. I, I have a nice ass house, but I ain't never there. But you, you, so. you'd never be there. Yeah, you'd be on the road racing. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I know if I ever did do it, I'd still race dirt. Like I'd still have my dirt car. So I, that would just be less time I would get to spend money on stuff. Well, what we need you to do this year, we need you to come to Bristol because I, I heard through the grapevine that they're gonna try to get some more of those NASCAR boys talked into coming over there jumping into y'all's arena on the dirt and, and and running the late model race. If that's the case, we're going to need you to go there and just kick their ass. They'll be wanting to borrow your fucking backup car, though. I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Oh, you are going to Bristol? Yeah, I'm going to Bristol. Yeah, we're, we're going there. now. We're, we're, we're going now. We won't gonna go, we're going to go, but we will go now. We're going. Yeah. Um, like I said, since, since the day that I met you with Harold, man, and talked to you outside the car that night, you know what I'm saying? I've been a fan. And I keep up with you, keep up with you on Facebook. You know, I shoot you a, a message or whatever when you win those races, even when you don't don't do so good. But um, like I said, man, you set the world on fire last year. I mean, that was fucking unheard of what you done last year in, in any kind of racing. Um, what'd you win? Thirty one races last year? Yeah, thirty one. Yeah, that's fucking yeah. strong. That's yeah. strong. It's uh that Hell, I don't know. We uh, we talk we talk about it every day. We went to like this weekend when we were getting our ass kicked in Florida. We were like, "Damn, we're spoiled." As soon as we don't win, we think like everything's wrong, everything's broke, shit's wore out. Like we're like, <laughs> you know, freaking out because we don't win all the time. But uh, we just keep on working on, it, man. We're gonna get it, and we know we know deep down that you ain't gonna win every night. You know, everybody's tough and everybody's working just as hard, and everybody's got the same stuff we got. You know, they got the best engines and the best cars and I said it's going. It's going to be a fight. I think y'all seen that how much money they're going to pay this year. So you know everybody's going to yeah. be working as hard as they can. So hey, let me ask you this because I know um, you. The one race you, I think you set quick time, but you failed the droop rule. Didn't they change that rule on you? Where yeah, yeah. So they changed. So they've always done. I mean, I've ran a lot of races around here with the droop rule, but this year they come up with uh, they changed. We just lost him. Are you there? I think you got. Did he mute his mic? Did you mute your mic? 
How about now? Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Now you can repeat that now. So they got you so with the droop rule. That's calling me. So they changed. Yeah, it's it's same droop rule, but the difference is now. Last year the left rear tire had to come off the ground. Well, now they want both back tires off the ground. Right. So when they jack the if if the left rear the my left rear tire was off the ground, and when they checked it there, it was illegal. But if they kept jacking to get the right rear tire off the ground, then it's illegal. Right. And that was something they added this year to kind of change it a little bit i don't know if they're dead set on it yet because it's it pretty much limits us from adjusting our car because if we do something to our right front and the thing's pivoted on the jack every time we adjust we have to go back there and move our deck and i don't think they want to i mean obviously they made the rule but i don't think they want to throw everybody out every five seconds because we're working on our car well and that's what i've seen i've seen mike uh, mark whitener i think it was he failed that thing like three mm -hmm. times and went to the rear and yeah, and I don't, I don't think they knew. Well, I knew, I knew we had a problem real early because I had just passed it, and then I come right back and failed it. So I had to figure out why. But uh, you know how it is. Nobody wants to hear that you got an excuse why you got threw out. So I just kept my damn mouth shut. And then I remember Big Frog called me, and I said, "I know every, I know, I know what you're about to tell me. I already did it." So, like I said, they got something to work on. Whether they change it or they might, hell, I don't know. They might not. Who knows? Well, they, um. I know they changed like the, a bunch of the body rules on the front end this year, right? Like the way that they they kind of measure, you have to lay a, a straight edge across both of the the elephant ears, correct? Yeah, they well they did that last year. They did that last year too. So now what mm -hmm. they're doing is the body the body skew. It's probably what right. you're talking about. How they, yeah, they changed the angle of it. Yeah, same. Sounds way. like they a bunch of fucking crybabies. That's what we deal with <laughs> yeah, around here. I mean, it is what it is. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, but uh i don't know i mean obviously i don't agree with it because that was the way my car was but if they want right. us to fix it we'll fix it and same people gonna win it don't matter the more that ass. they make i mean it's just this whoever works the hardest and, and gets the shit figured out still gonna win and it's gonna be the same guys that are gonna win so uh we just play by their rules and do whatever they want us to do i guess well mm -hmm. that's what i liked about it the other night when they interviewed you when you won the heat race you like we got more work to do. We got more work to do. We got more work to do. Right. That's good shit. Yeah. You're digging. You're still looking for speed. Yeah, we just got to yeah. keep uh, – obviously, the – the the you start changing a lot of stuff on your car, and, yeah, it gets it all thrown out of balance. So Believe me, we know this. I, I wasn't going to race. I, I really wasn't going to go down there. I mean, the you race a lot of times in speed weeks, but what you – the amount of tires you burn up and – just this everything every day you drive the shit out of them at east bay you're killing your motor you volusia's huge i mean it's almost not worth it the only reason i did race is because i knew they changed all these rules and the more i can race the more i can dial this thing in before we get right. to the big paying shows hell yeah right it, it, is that like when you're how as far as the tire shortage is that affecting you guys at all uh on the national level well, we can, we can, we still get them in time. I mean, we get them at last minute, but we still get what we need in time. And honestly, for us, like I never was a guy that put four new tires on anyway. So they let you put, you know, either one or two tires on. So it doesn't really bother me. Hell, that's how I always raced anyway, you know? Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, kind of, but what, I mean, not really. We still, we, it does, it is a pain in the ass when you call and you know, you know, you're looking at your schedule and you know you're going to have to get LM tires shipped down here, you know, because you're going to need them in two or three weeks. Well, mm -hmm. you'd like to go ahead and get them and, and get them mounted and go ahead and start working on them. If you get a free chance, then you have to wait till the week before you go. But we're still getting them. It's just, like I said, it's kind of a pain in the ass when you call and, and you you get just enough to go with, you know. Right. So, so one of your homeboys here from Georgia, Tyler Walker, said, shout out from Augusta, Brandon. He said, um... He said, when are you building your shop down here? It's already up. We ended up buying one. The county was giving us shit. So it's already up. That thing's probably going to be cool. full. So, so there you go, Tyler. There, there's your question of that. The shop is already up. As, it, as far as like some, some of the young racers that might be watching, I mean, uh, what, what would you say to the guys that want to grow up and just race full time like you? Um, like – what kind of words of encouragement, you know, would you have for them? Yeah, they just, hell, I was, I was one of them. You know what I mean? Like you right. can't, I hear people, the biggest thing 
I see people all the time, like, uh, you know, if shit ain't going their way or it costs mm -hmm. too much money. I mean, that's just part of it. You're like, yeah, we know it costs too much money. You just got to figure it out. You got to hustle it, drive whatever you can drive. I mean, it's stepping stones. Like, I didn't get here. Look how many people I drove for. I drove right. for everybody and their mama, whether it was a, a shit box or not, just drive <laughs> it and that'll open doors for you. You know what I mean? Like I knew, I knew my parents weren't going to be able to, to get me as far as I did. So I just had to meet people and, and get people to help me get where I wanted to go. You know, like pretty much don't make excuses. You know what I mean? Just keep, Hell yeah. down and keep digging, do whatever you can do to, to further you and don't worry about it. Don't, don't kinda... worry about what nobody else says about, you know, you might not be doing no good. Like that's like Dalton. That's what I was trying to tell him. He's not that he's down or nothing, but all that right. learning and all that disappointment that he's getting right now, that's just going to make him stronger and just keep taking him to the next level. That's yeah. a fact. That's a fact. Um, so let me ask you this on, on, on the real side of this. Do you think that fucking rule was, was put in place because of you? Do you think the 76 is what caused that rule? <laughs> I do. And you can it, keep uh, it real. Yeah, I'd say it didn't help it. I mean, obviously, yeah, because, I mean, I don't know. What do you do? Yeah, yeah but I mean, this mine was probably the worst in the pit. So, yeah, I'd say most of it was directed toward us. Okay, but listen, though. So so, so the same guys you race with night in and night out, they've been doing this, way, most of them long, way longer than you because you're a young guy. Most of them guys have been around the sport way longer than you have. They walk by, they see, then that means they can do it fucking too. If there's no rule against it, then you can do it too. Yeah, a lot of them tried to do it. That's what we didn't understand. Like, a lot of them did do it. They did do it, and, and then they didn't like it, and then they changed it back. So we didn't really see the reason to to get everybody on, you know, to, to make a big deal. But all that shit is, is uh, it's as big as they want to make it. Like, it didn't have right. to be a big deal at all. Right. There was never been a rule the whole time we've been racing about how far the car can be, y'all. So why make a big deal about it now? But they did. And this is what we got now. Like I said, now they're having to, we're probably about to have another rule change. I would say maybe not. I don't know. I don't get all into it. So I just go, whatever they tell us to do, we do and adapt to it and then keep it rolling. Sooner or later, they'll run out of shit to change, you know? Yeah. Well, like you said, a winner's going to win. Sure. Yeah. And, 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 and whatever rule they come out with, you go, you're going to figure out a way to push that rule to the fullest. If you don't, then you're not racing. Yeah. Then you, you're going, you're going to be that guy in the B main every single night trying to make the feature. Um, you have to push, push the gray areas of the rules. I don't care what kind of racing you're in. Pushing the gray areas doesn't mean you're cheating. Um, you know, but like I said, if everybody can do it and like the body, I mean, that's visible. I mean, you can, those guys that's been around racing, all their life, they can look at your car and see what you're doing from a body standpoint. And so you can do the same damn thing. So why cry about it? Yeah. See, that's what sucks about it because I mean, it's a piece of sheet metal pretty much. It's really honestly cheap to do. And it's out in the open. Like you said, you, everybody can see it. So if they want to do it, they can. But what sucks about it now is now somebody, whether it's me or something, somebody will figure out how to, how to get that advantage back. Right. And so it costs a lot of money. You That's know? right. Yeah. I was That's hoping right. you were going to put that thing in victory lane on my birthday so you could give me a shout out on there. But um, right. you stunk it up that night. So I, we're going to stunk we're, it up a lot here. In but you got, you got a pass on that one. Um, yeah. But um, I'm looking forward to, like you said, I'm looking forward to when you move on to the bigger money races, to the tracks that you like, to the tracks that you favor. And, and then I want to see, I want to see you smear it back in their face. The, because that's what you're going to do when you get it. When when that car crosses the checkered flag first, then that's smearing them back in their face. That's telling you, you make the rule, and I'm gonna figure it out, and I'm gonna outrun your ass either way you put it. You know, yep. and and that's what I like about you. I like about I like your I like your when I say I don't want to say your focus. I like the attitude you bring with your focus. Like fuck me, I'ma fuck you. So come on, let's go. Let's get let's go do it. You know what I mean? I like it. And 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 them guys, man, they know, trust me. They may not have knew before, but they know now when that seventy six pulls up to the fucking racetrack that they better have their shit together. 
if the wheel don't fall off or the drive shaft don't hit you in the ass, that's right. Like, like, <laughs> like, like, they better be, they better be on their game. You know, um, who, who, who is your, and I ain't gonna say your hero. I'm gonna say, who did you idolize in dirt, dirt model race, dirt late model racing before you got to the big stage? Who would you um, say your favorite driver was? The one I was actually the the one that probably probably Randall Chubb. I, don't, I mean, he was the one, he. I think Go. he was one of the first ones to. I mean, I, I seen all them guys when I was first starting, and you know, I had the, I had my favorites, but Randall was one of the ones that like kind of took me under his wing and and showed me everything and like treated me like somebody. You know what I mean? Right. He pretty much pretty much taught me everything i knew about a car growing up because like i said my dad i mean he drag race hell he didn't know nothing about none of this we i remember trying to get our the first dirt car we had i remember being on the porch out there trying to figure out how to mount the damn tires so <laughs> like we didn't know how to do nothing when we got them and randall pretty much taught us how to do every everything that i knew how to do when i was growing up pretty much come from randall so and i and i remember seeing like i said the first time i seen him race was at phoenix city and he was like badass around there. He'd come from like the tail two or three times to run out of gas, all kind of crazy shit about to win the national 100. So that's what made me like him. And then I kind of got to work with him a little bit with Charette. And then, uh, you know, he started his business, the Wolfpack deal. And I was like one of the yes. first ones in yep. that. Um, so as far as somebody that kind of pretty much coached me and got me here, it would be him. Uh, and I, like I said, I still tell everybody when I was, when I was, first watching the late miles though mccready mccready was my man you know um he was my my favorite driver you know hell yeah um look, speaking of, of randall and harold and all them like that, that's how in fact that's how we met them when they had wolfpack together and um they were they were building cars for our buddy here scott altry who's been a friend of ours for our entire life lives you know lives right down the road from us for all of our lives we race go karts with him, and then he's always supported us in our drag racing and our dirt racing, and we've always supported him and everything that he done. I think it's cool, man, that that a person like that is the person that you idolize and the person that sort of give you your tutelage to 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 get the knowledge that you got now. I think it's cool that you're taking Dalton, and I'm not gonna say under your wing, but you are taking him under your wing and sort of taking him into a, to a, to a, to a field that he's never played in. And, and, and I think that he's going, I don't know if you have seen the show when he was on here, but I, I, I predicted on there that he's going to get two wins this year. He's He's got good shit. He's just got to figure it out and figure out, you know, who he's racing against and what he's got to do to, to, to outrun them. Yeah, like I said, I think when he gets back, like he's he's gonna go back home uh, this week. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be here with us for speed weeks. Yeah, so he'll he'll see. I mean, he it it's just every time. I mean, even he don't understand it right now. He will. He'll see how much better when you race against those guys week in week out. How much better you're gonna get? Um, it's almost impossible not to. Right. So, Brandon, um, when are you coming like closer to the Carolinas? Uh, Turkey. I don't know. I, I ain't see y'all got any big money races coming up around here. <laughs> hey, we will, right. hey, we can put the fucking money up on this show. We fucking we just what we just raised five thousand extra, made a yeah. ten thousand dollar show. Yeah, so we have a five thousand late model show. So we we you have a limited a, motor. So we got a a limited race here Saturday night, and um I sponsor Willie Milliken, um the Wild Child the One Car, and then a buddy of ours named Cheryl Sewell owns christian thomas's car the 06 they always get into it don't they? yes hey, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so 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 we were talking on the show and christian asked the race promoter here he said listen man you think you give us a, a fucking high cushion and he said if you give us a high cushion i don't care if i qualify on the pole i'll go to the rear and start from the rear and when he did that willie said well fuck it i'll go to the rear too and start from the rear well, when when he did it, the fucking comments and and messages went crazy. Yeah. People was just like, "I'll give a hundred, I'll give two fifty, I'll give." Hell, we had Jason oh, yeah. Prince give fifteen hundred. Yeah, you know. So it ended up the racetrack added twelve hundred. We ended up taking up like twelve thirty eight hundred, and then the race the racetrack added twelve hundred. So we got an additional five thousand for them boys to go to the back and, and on and top see of if, what they win. On top of what they win, if they can come up come from the rear and win the race in a fifty lap race 
then then they'll get an additional five thousand on top of what they win. We probably get ten if you come. Just saying. Yeah, that, no pressure. That, this weekend. That is yeah. this Saturday yes. night. You got something uh, to do. <laughs> that's in yeah. Fayetteville. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't even I haven't been there since they redone it. Yeah, it's, it's a bull ring now. Um, yeah. Your brother has. He wore their ass out. Yeah, he he did. <laughs> Yeah, he, he he done a good job down here. Like I said, he the one the the night that his motor broke, I think his motor broke, but whatever broke on the car, he the one that race too. Yeah. He he was hands down the fastest thing here. Um I he he he's probably trying to change that little part to big, so you better be careful there. He must slide in there and, 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 and fucking take that handle from you. You know them young boys, man, that 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 drive and that fight and then he gets he's cheating cuz he gets to watch you. So he's already got a leg up on the ones his age now, you know. Shit. Well, but, uh, where where can uh, people go and buy some merchandise from you, man? Uh, oh, really? I know you I got some, some new shirts that out that are they look really nice. They're gonna be on the internet. I just I kind of handle most of that by myself, and we just had a lot. I just got so much stuff going on. I just got home, and uh, but I'm gonna put it on the internet. I I've actually got a t-shirt van we're working on. We're gonna try to have it at Bristol. So uh, yeah. Well, you better be ready to drink some damn beer at Bristol. Days. You, hey, you better again. be you better be ready to drink some beer at Bristol. All right, y'all come on. Hey, hey and when we you put, and when you we put that some bitch in the winter circle, you better give fouled out a damn shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause 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 I can guarantee you, I'm a, I'm gonna put this out there. I'm willing to make a wager with anybody in the country for any amount they want to bet. They pick their driver. And I'll take you at Bristol, and and and, and we'll just let it rip. Ooh. And 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 yeah, if you win, I, I sat there last year. I got to get some damn better. We night. were no, no, we, were we, we talking about for the feature. We were there last year, you and we it. weren't gonna go back this year. But now that you're going, we're definitely going back because we're gonna go there and support you and, and check you out. And um, like I said, if anybody takes that bet, don't worry, you will get your percentage. Yeah, I, I will. I will come down there and hand it to you in hundred dollar bills. I promise you. Because I like you anywhere you pull up to. Um, like I said, I you, you go everywhere. And what I like about you is you don't let them dictate where you go. You mm -hmm. choose where you go. And, and you know, I understand a lot of those guys are, they've got the corporate sponsors and stuff. And, and you know, they're, they're running that series for, for that reason, for their sponsor exposure and the fact of trying to win a championship. I think it's cool that you could have probably won the championship last year and chose to go yeah. chase the money. And, and because that's what it's about. It's about the love of racing. And if you're going to do what you love, you got to make it interesting as far as financially. Because y'all boys race for a percentage now. Y'all ain't getting them free paychecks. Y'all race for a percentage. So you don't win, you don't get paid. Yeah. And, um, that's the and biggest that's, thing with us is like we go. I, I like being home too. I ain't going to lie. Like. I like going and racing, go do my thing, and then come back home. Like, I don't want to be staying in somebody's backyard or, right. or you know what I mean, for or yeah. two months at a time or whatever. I mean, I've done it. I've did it, and it's cool to see, you know, and it's cool to do, and it gets you the experience. But once you got that, hell, I ain't Is interested it, in running you, all over the damn place. You over yeah. it then, huh? Damn yeah, exactly. right. You sure I, you know I think you got, you got a fiancé, right? Yeah. Yeah, for about – hell, we've been engaged for about five years. So when you gonna get married? Smart, man. I don't know. Whenever we get all this stuff done around here, and when when <laughs> I, when that t-shirt van kicks off, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that you handle yourself, smart man. Well, y'all got any more questions for him, man? I'm good, we, man. I, I really appreciate you coming on man, the show, this, man. This has been great, awesome. Yep. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. We no we problem. we planned this from the very beginning, and and I'll be honest with you, these two on the set didn't <laughs> think I was gonna pull this off. And um and I told him I said I said nah when I sent him the message I said you you ninety percent of the time if I send you a message you reply to me if you're not racing you'll reply to me or you'll hit me back the next day but I know your fucking phone probably gets bombarded with messages oh no but when I told him you hit me back and that I talked to you I said he's coming on I said but we gotta we're gonna have to change the date of the show we're gonna have to do the date when he's not racing and um they were like well let's do it. Because we had planned from the very beginning to figure out a way to get you on. If we had to fucking pay you to yeah. come on here, we was we was like we was like we're gonna get him on this fucking show. <laughs> I could say I told him I said I promise you because my prediction is nine fifty one turns into over a million this year. 
I think that you're going to go dominate the same racetracks that you dominated last year. And then I think you're going to pick up a few of those where you had some bad luck. And there'll be some new rules next year. I just hope his his drivers around here can do the same. Just win a little yeah, I sponsor half the fucking racetrack we, we, around we here. Got if, I don't, <laughs> if I don't win a race during fucking speed weeks, it's not because I don't have the cars fielded to do so. We something. got a concrete slab. We just need to win a, a few of these. Yeah, but if we do, you will fucking know it. I promise you. Oh yeah, we're gonna get down. There's definitely gonna be a fucking Hell, party yeah. in Victory Lane for sure. I um, see you got the uh, precision suspension. You got Sammy to get you. You get beat. Oh Sammy yeah, Sammy? yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Sammy's our premier. Sammy's sponsor, a, yeah. sure. Sammy is a guy yeah. that um, I he, and he does my shocks and stuff. Shocks. Yeah, and actually he does AJ shocks. Sammy on the show yet? Yeah, yeah he, was he was on. He was on with Dalton. Actually. Yeah, he was on when Dalton was on. Um, he praised you. Yeah, he did. He, he told us. He, he did? He oh, did. yeah. He did, though. Oh, yeah. He told us that he had worked with you in the past. And that um, yeah. he just told, he told us that he said, man, that you're a smart kid and that, that you know, that that a bunch of people in the garage has a lot of respect for you. And he has a lot of respect for you. Um, like I said, you, you earned my respect. The very first time I met you, like I said, me and you stood to the side and talked a minute when I told you about Stevie being right behind you. He was like, yeah, man, I see his shop over there. I see him yeah. over there with yeah. the cars and stuff, but I've never went over there. Like I said, great dude, man. You go over there, holler at him, him, Jack, Phil, Robert, any of them guys over there, just great guys. Um, just just like you down to earth. He tells them all the time when he goes to the winter circle. There, he tells them fast. Look, you just getting mad because a fucking dirt poor country motherfucker from Evans, Georgia, just fucked you up, you know. And that's why I love him because he talks shit. Me and him's been all over the country, racing racing drag cars. And one thing about him, man, he's he's going he's going to talk shit, but he's going to back it up. He's a bad motherfucker. He, I mean. And, and like yeah, I said, that's this. Oh, yeah. Bad mofo. There, 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 there's something to be said about Evans, Georgia. Like I said, you got two of the baddest fucking racers on the planet. But before we go, I got one more fucking question. And this is going to be a good one for you. How does it feel when you're out there on the same racetrack as Young Money? And, and, and you know, he's, 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 he's that NASCAR boy that, that, that straight up dominated NASCAR last year. Here, he dominated NASCAR about like you dominated dirt racing last year but how does it feel just to fuck him up out there just be honest just how does it feel just to fucking <laughs> fuck him up because you know I mean, it's it's because cool. he he's got one of the smartest fucking people in the game with him now kevin's yeah, no joke does. you know yeah, kevin is does. no joke um i don't know like i said every time i mean I, obviously he can drive the shit out of a race car i mean we damn all right anything so, yeah anything it, it it is funny i mean like the way I've, I've become pretty good friends with him, you know, yeah. um, he helped me up on some stuff and introduced me to some, to some people. So, uh, I got all kind of respect for him, but he does, he still talks a little shit to me every now and then, like, uh, about it when we're racing or whatever, like at Brunswick, he said, he said, good thing you were cheating the other night. You know, I got fast, got fast time or whatever. So, uh, but let's say, man, he's just, he's honestly just like one of us. Like I, I, I've got to where now I don't even yeah. think about it. Like I go up there and watch him qualify or whatever. I watch him just like I'm watching all my other buddies out there. It's just one of the dudes, you know. Well, you, uh, you may have to talk to him and get him on the show too. <laughs> we'll we'll keep it. Yeah, we'll keep it. Hey, on. we'll keep it PG when he's on here though, because you know he's got to be politically correct. That's right. With, which Mister H like probably. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, question, Brandon. Um, how'd you get big sexy name? Uh, I used to drive for some damn stoners when I was <laughs> little. That's okay. Yeah, hey, they, we used to be stoners. That's <laughs> right. Well, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Probably what stoners, it's kind of. Yeah, <laughs> not stoners. We ain't going to talk about that. working, and I was short and fat when I was little, and he, he said, he started calling me Big Sexy, and then everybody would come in the shop. That's what they said. Hey, we're, we're Big Sexy yet. I'd pop out over there, just kind of kind of hung out for us for awesome. a little bit. See my, you see my koozie? So this came. Can you see? My way. Stay on there. There you go. Lion bastard. bastard. Lion bastard. bastard. Yeah. So my wife named me this because we used to race go karts hot and fucking heavy. I mean, we we went after it pretty hard. We were we quit four or five years. Bell pops up. Let's get a legend car. It's like, Hell yeah, I'm game. You paying me? In. So from then on, I've been lion bastard. So when people come around the pits, they're like, "We're getting, 
What does he get the name? Like, ask the blonde head over there. Talking your mic. Oh, sorry. I have to. He, that's my baby brother, by the way, Brandon. I have to sort of guide him through life. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm fucking up. That's the case. <laughs> whatever. Hey, sort of like, sort of like Cody. You know what I mean? You sort of, yeah. You, you got so, to sort of hook, it, hook the damn little service dog leash to him. So, like, come on. Obviously, you didn't hear what I had to say, <laughs> according to Numb Nuts over here. But uh, line bastard, right? So my wife kind of named me that because we quit racing. She's like, "Y'all done?" I'm like, "Yeah, we're good." So we bought a legend car. She's like. You're fucking lying bastard. Why y'all going back racing? So it kind of stuck. So AJ got paid $100 to put that on the top of the legend car. So it's kind of stuck since then. I think we're going to sell a lot of t-shirts this year. Right. I can win That's a couple right. races. I won one last year, but, yeah, these people around here like cheap. They like to cheat? Oh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. They be crybaby bitches. And I'll be honest with you, our shit would be cheated all up if it was left up to me. He oh, don't want to do oh. it. You know what I'm saying? But I, me, I'm like. Do it till you get caught. And I they, mean, it they is hate us. Is. They hate us. But um, like I said, man, we appreciate you coming on the show. Um, it's an honor to have you here, man. Like like I said, man, the shit that you've done last year in Dirt Lake Motor Racing and the way the season starting this year, I mean, listen, when you go to a racetrack and there's three or four nights of racing there and you grab one or two of them, that ain't a bad deal. Not right. Not running against the people that you run against. Like I said, we're going to bring you on again before the end of the year. When you start knocking them things down four or five in a row, mm. we're going to bring you back on and really make some folks mad on here because we're going to really talk some shit to the ones that's finishing behind you. And we can do that that's because right. then they can't hold it against you. You can blame it on us. That's you know. Right. But like I said, man, we appreciate you. And, um, hell, the next time we're going to probably get you to bring a little sexy on here with you too. And, um, All right, man. and give him some air time. And like I said, man, you keep keep it straight and them – Keep busting their ass, and we got to make a million. You forty nine thousand short. You let me down. Got to win one. You, you let That's me it. down. You forty nine thousand short. That's right. All right, All right boys. Well, I thank you, man. Hey, man. Y'all. Thank you, bro. All right, yes, man. Sir. Appreciate you. All right. See y'all. All right. All right, guys. We're gonna end it with that right there, man. A God special, tomorrow. special thanks, man, to Brandon Overton, man. That's that's huge for the show. That's Bad huge dude. for Bad for dude. Dirt Lake Model Racing around here. Um, you know, um, like I said, this guy, man, done something that's completely unbelievable in racing. Um, when you race against guys like he races against every single night, and you go out and do the things he did, I mean, you just gotta fucking respect that. Well, it gave us the time. I mean, yeah. damn, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. This don't tell you what kind of dude this guy is. I mean, this is some real shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, he don't know man, us from Adam. Um, I look forward to, to, to Chad winning some races this year, AJ winning some races this year, Daniel Parker winning some races this year, Wyatt, Bladen, and then the Wild Child. We're going to have to get back Woo! into that dominance and p- keep that one up fucking front so we can talk shit to everybody. Again, man, peace out, and thank y'all for watching. The next episode of Fouled Out will be posted on Facebook.